The 65th Conference on the Status of Women may have lacked the pomp and circumstance of years past, not to mention the number of female participants, but it had something previous conferences did not, the first ever female vice president of the United States. It is an honor to address this esteemed commission. So having a first VP lady in the U.S., you know, it's just amazing. The most democratic country in the whole world, it's amazing. It's just such a strong message for every woman everywhere. Promoting women's leadership was the theme of the year's event, but women like Kamala Harris, Germany's Angela Merkel, and New Zealand's Jacinda Ardern remain the exceptions on the world stage. Around the globe, women serve as the head of state or head of government in just some 22 countries. And even here at the United Nations, where women now make up more than 40 percent of the professional staff, a female secretary general has yet to be elected. And COVID-19 has been a setback for women. Lockdowns have led to increases in domestic violence, women leaving the workforce, and disruptions to family planning services, particularly in developing countries. The United Nations estimates 12 million women lost access to contraception, resulting in 1.4 million unplanned pregnancies. The status of democracy also depends fundamentally on the empowerment of women, not only because the exclusion of women in decision making is a marker of a flawed democracy, but because the participation of women strengthens democracy. And that's true everywhere. The new U.S. administration has promised to carry the flag for women at the U.N., restoring funding for women's sexual and reproductive health, which was cut by the Trump administration. Sexual and reproductive health are so important in the, um, in the part of the world where uh, mortal, more, maternal mortality is so high. Giving this gathering, despite recent setbacks for women, something to celebrate. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations.